You'll see today in our agenda we have two presentations, uh, one from our youth democracy and uh, the other from the uh, Chief Constable and the Police Commissioner. Um, we're going to deal with the youth uh, democracy first because obviously um, our, our young friends have got to go back to work, i.e. back to school, college and everything, and we do not want to detain them from that. Um, you will all know that we had a democracy week in October. I won't tell you much more because I might be stealing their thunder. But they're going to, between them, be um, speaking for 10 minutes. Uh, they're going to come up. Can I introduce to you Lord Gonzales, Arishki Baal, Andrew Nichols, and Gabriella Costa. The first two are from the Youth Parliament, the last two are from Amersham and Wickham College. Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to come up? There will be a chance to ask questions at the end. for the Wickham area. Thank you for inviting me along to talk about Youth Parliament, which I hope will raise the profile of such an important and enthusiastic group, which gives a voice to the young people in our local community. My school encouraged me to get involved, and I was very proud to be elected, as I believe young people's opinions really matter and should be listened to. My original manifesto was to raise awareness of young people with disabilities. People are stereotypical about those with disabilities, and I wanted to raise awareness that just because a person has a disability does not mean that we cannot be involved or take part in activities or have our voices heard. I can prove that as a young person with a disability. This year, I have had some amazing opportunities and learnt so much. I really enjoyed the annual sitting, which was a residential where all the members of Youth Parliament from across the country met up for training, campaign planning, and to update our manifesto. I made lots of new friends, and it really helped my confidence and my self-esteem to grow and flourish. The Make Your Mark campaign has been amazing. Almost a million young people voted from all over the country on issues that affect us all. Five issues were chosen to be debated in the House of Commons, and I was lucky enough to be one of the 279 members of Youth Parliament to attend. The debate was chaired by the Speaker of the House of Commons, Right Honourable John Barker. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was incredible to see that so many young people were extremely passionate and enthusiastic about the issues that they were talking about. It is important to all young people that they are represented by their local constituency and that their voices are heard by young people all across the country, as well as the important decision makers in the House of Commons. The two issues that were chosen for Youth Parliament for the Youth Parliament 2015 campaign are working together to combat racism and religious discrimination and mental health. We hope that next year many more young people will be involved and will be passionate about politics. Hello, my name is Rushi and I am 16 years old. I am running to, for UK United Kingdom Youth Parliament on behalf of South Bucks. Why I'm running for Youth Parliament is because I want to help magnify the voices of young people to take action to improve the lives of all young people. Before being introduced to the youth service, voicing my opinion on significant topics affecting young people was foreign to me. I was really inspired and it increased my interest and knowledge in politics. It also gave me an opportunity to support my local community, as I wanted to raise awareness to young people about the Parliament in Buckinghamshire. And I wanted to give them the same encouragement to voice out what are the main issues affecting young people in Buckinghamshire today. 
There are many people here willing to listen and support them in taking action. MPs aren't in our schools or know exactly what goes on in the day-to-day -day life of a young person in Buckinghamshire. This makes it very difficult to address and solve issues specific to us. However, we have avid young people wanting to speak up and let them know what issues they feel need addressing so that they can be solved. It increases the sense of local democracy and can bring a community together. Also, young people sometimes can have a different perspective to what is more important and needs attention. However, many young people aren't made aware that they have this opportunity because it isn't advertised enough. We want to bring, again, the sense of local democracy by not isolating young people from making these decisions. We've been given training on how to be an effective member of youth parliament. We've learned lots of new skills, such as writing a good speech, making yourself aware of local topics, and the difference in approaching young people and adults. That is why we want to go to schools and give talks and speeches to, younger gen to the younger generation to form them of this opportunity. United, youth, United Kingdom Youth Parliament gives us a great platform to do so. I'd like to start out first of all by thanking both the councillors who, were, who came into uh, Amersham and Wickham College who did a lovely presentation and got down with all of the students there who helped us to learn about uh, the democracy that we live in as well as the actual issues that councillors face every single day when it comes to both the budget and also having to deal with their constituents. Secondly, I'd like to thank everyone here at, after all as it's a wonderful experience to be here as just a college student. But again, to go back to the, the Democracy Week, at our college we had a wonderful selection of councillors come in along with uh, youth voice workers who set up an event that taught us specifics on the councillors' jobs, how they work, how they function, and how they're elected and also having a little section where we voted on how we thought uh, certain things should work. So we were given a uh, wonderful piece of technology, iPads, uh, to look at the way the councillors budget. We were given a budget of, I believe it was, a million and seven hundred thousand pounds, and we were given different categories where we could reduce the budget or increase the budget. And along with this, when we saw that we reduced the budget on certain areas, such as uh, on the infrastructure, we found that there would be many complaints, there would be many different organisations that would have to intervene and say they uh, put out their voice on the underspending of the transport budget. And it really got us in the mind of knowing how hard it is to be a councillor and how hard it is for a democracy to function, but it all works out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you've done it. <laughs> um, I agree completely with Andrew. He's pretty much said what I wanted to say. <laughs> but oh, no, sorry. Like all right. <laughs> um, I'd just like to say that it was very, very helpful because I'm being a girl that I am, uh, I didn't know anything about what our taxes go on. I just thought, oh, the government is just taking our money. <coughs> but that was a very eye-opening, you know, experience because I also found that although I thought it was a very easy session at the start, I'll just take a bit of money off, knock it off each of the little things. It wasn't like that because if you knock the money off certain places, such as, uh, for example, education or, or like um, roadworks, it has a larger impact on other areas as well. And yeah, it gave young people a big insight on how councillors do their jobs. And it's not as easy as it seems. You can't just, you know, knock off money on taxes because that will have a wider impact in general. Um, I also found that although we find that paying taxes maybe a little bit tough for us. It also benefits us in the long run because it gives us opportunities that other people in other countries don't have and aren't as, um, you know, uh, they're just not as um, privileged as we are, I think, as a country because we have a lot more than other people have as we see in the news around the world, which... As a student I am, living in England, I am very glad I have the opportunity to have a voice as well for young people, but also be aware of what's happening across the country.
country and the world in a global national state. So thank you for the opportunity and having to listen to me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure the, uh, my fellow colleagues here will listen though you've got on with the budget, found it all went well, well in the end. Uh, where have I heard that before? Uh, and uh, you kept well to time, something that my uh, colleagues here have not necessarily worked to lately. Um, but many, many thanks. I purposely didn't say it until now, but we are, I, as you all know, on the web today. I didn't want to frighten you even more. Um, but at the end of the day, you'll be able to go home and see how you, how you spoke. And you spoke very well indeed. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Brown. First of all, just to thank the young people for their involvement. Uh, certainly, it's always a time I find very interesting just to see what the priorities are. And I was one of those who went to Amsterdam and Whitcomb College, and we had this discussion over the budget. And I think for a lot, it was about the first time they'd had to look at the different headings all across the areas we have to. Um, interesting discussions. One bit that worried me was, okay, we need more on education. They even wanted more on roads. I can't think why. But then they say, well, where did we cut this from? And I heard this um, conversation saying, well, let's take it from the old people. They have to <laughs> 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 so, so I think there's an important part of education to continue there. The more they're involved, the more they'll understand the wider issues and where we have to come from. Um, I also had the privilege of uh, meeting one of the members of the youth parliament, and they, they were challenging, uh, actually, as the chairman of the council, it was good. Well done. Uh, Mrs. McPherson. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, everyone. That was a really inspiring um, speeches from all of you, and uh, really well done. I've got one very simple question, actually. Uh, it is political, and I don't know who of you would like to comment on it. But what do you think about um, lowering the voting age to 16? Okay. What I'll do is I'll take the, all the questions first, then we know what time we've got to play with. Um, this is Birchley. Mr. Irwin. I too was lucky enough to come along and meet some of these guys at um, the college. When I walked into the room, I was a little bit scared because we gave them all iPads and I think 90% of the room would, would turn them into consoles and playing games on them. A few, a few of them had hoodies on. Um, there were some definitely rude boys in, in the room. And I was just, it made me even more pleased by the end of it. That we didn't just, and congratulations to Joe and Simon and her, all the others organised it, they didn't just grab the stereotype children that go into core politics, they grabbed a class from the kids. Not all would have chosen and said, yes, please, I'd love to be there, but they all got engaged. I actually think I sent the council bankrupt on my one, um, but they all engaged really well. <laughs> Andrew, I was impressed with you very much. Unfortunately, your politics differ from mine. And Stephen might get on me better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but congratulations. But what I'd like to know is a difficult question because you bring up about racial and that sort of thing. What are your feelings on the serious Syrian crisis, and do you think we should take more into the country? It's a hard question, and don't ask me to bet. Just what do you feel on that? Remember, we've only got a quarter of an hour in total. Uh, right, Julie Bossel. Um, it's great to see you here today, and it reminds me when I was age 16, I came to the County Council. Mm -hmm to make a protest and look what's happened to me. Um, <laughs> um, it's good to see so many young women speaking to us today and I wondered whether you thought there should be more women in politics. 
and also whether you thought um, young people would do a better job of managing the budget than the existing county councillors. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stutchbury. First, thank you. Thank you very much for all the work you've done. I personally work with the Speaker of the House as the Independent Member of Parliament in Buckingham on Local Democracy Week. We set one up long ago. And when he became Speaker of the House, he said he wanted to bring young people into Parliament. And it was key. And we must say and, 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 and acknowledge that fact that it's only by you young people engaging in politics and deciding your particular view of politics that you'll be able to change the world. The one thing you really need to do is, irrespective of your views, you need to go out there and make sure young people actually vote, actually take part, actually get included in the political system. Because looking at the last election, if all the young people have voted, um, we may well have changed the result, even for the party elected more, or we may have had a different government. Because only by sitting on the sidelines will you let things happen you don't agree with. So get involved. Thank you. Mrs. Etheren. Thank you, Chairman. I went and I, I loved the session. I loved their honesty and their engagement. And actually, at the end of the session, they did say that they were more likely to vote. That was all about in, the, in an election, and they understood more about the council. But the thing that came across to me at the very end that still echoes in my ear, and I've repeated it to people, it's the thing Mr. Brown was saying about adult social care. And you were absolutely horrified at the cost of adult social care. And the young person on my table, a young girl, I don't think she's here today, it's not one of you. She said, my mother's looked after me while I've been growing up. I intend to look after her myself. And that was a, I thought that was quite profound. Thank you very much. We really enjoyed the session. Last question, and Mrs. Tuesday. Can you put my mic on? The green light. I found it a privilege to come and talk with you and to, and to see your, um, your views on things. And it was, it was a really very enlightening for us, as well as you. So we both learned something from each other. We learned, um, as I think Noel uh, mentioned earlier, I was quite uh, astounded when I was told that, well, the old people have had their time. You know, being an old person, that kind of worried me a bit. Um, but you did, we, when we explained that obviously those people that are old now have actually put money into the uh, kitty, I think you could see what I was saying, that, yeah, there is a real reason why we need to support old people as well. Unfortunately, we are living a lot longer, I'm afraid, so you might have to keep us for a while. But my question is really, um, how many of you after that actually felt that they would uh, really like to pursue um, a career in politics, would like to get involved? And did it change any of your minds or are you, are you still going to be whatever you thought before that? Has it, has it made a difference? Right. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, you've got about four or five minutes to so pick the question you want to answer. Most politicians do. So, I mean, who would like to come across and, and speak? Um, I'd just like to answer the votes for 16 one, whether I think the voting age should be lowered. Um, yes, I do think it should be lowered, because, um, like, like I said before, sorry, that young people can sometimes have a different perspective on things, on what they feel might be more important to them than perhaps someone else. And, like... Again, mentioned, but I think it's already sort of been mentioned before that we're learning from you as, as you're learning from us. So the more we get into it, the more we start thinking about, oh, we have this opportunity to vote, then we'd, we'd sit down to ourselves and think, if I'm voting, then I want to make my vote, ca vote count. So then we, we will have that incentive to get into politics and look into the different um, sections, whereas now we think we're not involved. We, we don't know. We, we were not, even if we get, in, get our the knowledge, what will we do with the knowledge? So, yes, I do think it should be lower so we can use it. Any other point people want to pick up? We've got about a couple of minutes. Um, to go back to what you said in the front there um, about the Syrian crisis, yes, I think it's absolutely <laughs> horrific what they've been doing to Paris and other countries. It's horrific that they think that they can just go in there and start bombing them. I mean... They're people too. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why 
um, the Islamic State feel that they have to go to that extreme level to get us to become Muslims because it's wrong shooting us and bombing us just because they want us to be um, Muslims like them. Um, I think that it's really worrying that, um, that they, their level of um, extremism is going up and up and up. It's not going down. I think it's really bad. Yeah, I think it's really bad. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Just, I think we've got time for one more answer, yeah? Okay, just to answer um, what they said about the older generations lasting longer. Um, yes, I agree that you, they also, you know, gave a lot to the government while they were young and everything. But um, I also think that because there's more um, older generations population than there is young teens, in the future, in the long run, it's going to be, it's going to have a, long, a big impact because us young youths will not be able to support the large growing number of the older generations because it just keeps on increasing because um, life expectancy is increasing as well because we're having all this care. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because we all want to live a long life, but we do need to look into it a little further because as a young person, I don't want all my money to go at the end of the month on taxes to support you know, because we need to, we, we're human as well, we need to know, we have families we need to take care of, and I don't think increasing taxes will be helpful, so we really do need to find a solution for the growing population of older generations soon. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and I think there's quite a few of us that might have to declare an interest in that. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I welcome the time when you come back here, maybe as elected members, um, some of us will still be here, some of us will you'll be paying for to be looked after. Um, but uh, I hope you t carry on. All four of you have done a splendid presentation. There's a lot there's a, a, a people here that could learn a lot from how you kept it distinct and to the point. I wish you well in your studies. I wish you well in your uh, politics if you carry on like that. And uh, if ever you need a helping hand, these are your representatives. And that's what they're there for. But thank you indeed for coming along. And uh, uh, I hope we will show our appreciation. Can I thank um, all four, Laura, Arifi, and Andrew, and Gabriella. Uh, that was a splendid presentation. Um, it's something we've not done before, but I hope we might be able to see it on an annual basis, because I think it's a good way of hearing uh, what the younger population of Quats are, are caring about and thinking about. Uh, might not be any different for us, but they've got a fresh eyes on things. So thank you very much for that.